that is an idea for something you can put in one of these great big snail moulds. The mould is from Let's Resin. I'll put you the link below. It's absolutely wonderful. As you can see, he's really big. He's got lovely little tentacles here and everything. So there's our mould. What I'm going to try putting in the shell is this stuff. It's that shredded stuff. Um, it's like cellophane that you can get for wrapping presents, you know, um, putting in the bottom of hampers, that sort of thing. Um, I've got a load of it. I bought in little bags for about a pound each from the works. But I've put this lot into a tub. I'm probably going to cut it up a bit first. But anyway, let's talk about the resin. This is quite a deep one. So I am going to use a deep pour resin. And uh, I'm trying out a few different brands as well because I have a discovered that a big problem um, that I'm having with the resin and the allergy reactions, despite PPE and everything else, because I'm really careful, at least I think I am, uh, I'm finding that there's a partic particular brands I'm allergic to. So I'm trying this one. As you can see, I have used it once already. I've used it for one of those whopping big dragons. And so far, so good. Um, so I've got my goggles and everything sorted. Let's get on and mix some resin up. So this resin is actually a one to two mix. So I'm going to mix up. It takes quite a lot in this shell as well. So I'm going to mix up a thousand milliliters. No, sorry, <laughs> hundred milliliters of the big one, and we're going to get another little cup and get fifty milliliters of the small one, your part B. And as I'm still waiting for my bigger silicon jugs to come to mix things up in, and I'm running out of other pots and stuff as well, um, I'm just going to use this takeaway meal, you know, uh, it's, it's a ready meal tray, I think, to mix it up in and hope that the resin doesn't melt it because of course that can happen. So I'm working on the basis that you don't want to see me mixing resin. That'll be boring, so I will speed this bit up a lot. But we've tipped it in and I'm just gonna stir it gently until we've got enough um, clarity to it. And then I'll talk to you a bit about, you know, the difference between the deep pour resin and the shallower resin, the normal stuff and so on. Cut here. Okay, I'm back. And as you can see, this is starting to mix up nicely. Um, there's still a little bit of, you still see streaks in it, but it's starting to clear. So I'll talk to you while I'm stirring. Now, what we've got with the shallow pour resins, is the sort of standard ones that you might use for coasters and things, is they're really quite thick. Deep pour resin is thinner, it's runnier, and that means that it doesn't tend to flash cure if you put deeper pours. So you need to think about how deep the pour is that you're doing, how deep is your mould or your tabletop or whatever. Uh, this shell, this snail is quite deep. There is a danger of if you use normal resin, it might flash cure. So you don't want that to happen because it'll go. It can go quite horrible. You can get all sorts of bubble problems. You, it can be quite vile. So you don't want that to happen. So I'm using this thinner, as you can probably see as I'm stirring it, much much thinner resin. They do tend to be. I've not yet found a one to one mix one. Um, so I'm thinking they tend to be one to two. Now that's not an overly difficult bit of maths even for me. <laughs> Although I do tend to work in round numbers to be on the safe side. Now, what you can probably see is there are bubbles in it, but nothing like as much as you could potentially get in the, the thicker regular pour resin. As a result, I do find it takes a little bit longer to cure, but that doesn't matter. But yeah, that's looking like it's mixed really well. I don't know if you can see that, but there's nowhere near as many bubbles as I normally get when I stir far too fast, being me. Um, into my regular resin. So let's just pop that on my little messy mat. So, and 
I've put it in this plastic tray, which probably isn't going to react too well to heat, but I'm just going to give it a quick zap. And already, almost all of the bubbles have gone. So I'm going to put that to one side now. Now the snail itself, what I'm planning to do is use a nail art powder on the body. And I'm going to just go all in with one colour, because I haven't tried this one yet, and I think it looks really pretty. And then the shell, I'm going to stuff it full of the shredded... As the, what is it? As take, man, you know, whatever that is. Stuff. Shredded stuff. I said it a minute ago, didn't I? Cellophane, that's what it is. Right. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to stuff it full of that and we'll see what happens. So the first thing to do is to get our mica on the top, I think. Isn't that pretty colour? Now, the chances are I'm going to end up with some in the shell if I'm not careful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get one of my Wonder Wipes and stuff it inside there to catch any spillage. I'll probably still end up with a bit, but it'll get it'll get the majority of it, won't it? So there we are. Now I'm going to zoom you in so you can just see what I'm doing with the mica powder. Um, for those of you who've not used mica powders before, you can buy ones specially for using with resin. But basically, I think they're the same thing as the ones that you use for nail art and you can get a different range of colours with nail art. And this is a nail art one. If you use the ones that they sell for resin, then you get um, you do get bigger pots of them, usually. They're quite small for nail art, but all the same, they're rather good. And what you do is you find that with some moulds, not all, but some moulds, the powder will stick to the actual silicon, as you'll see. Now, anybody who knows exactly how to do this already and has seen it a million times, feel free to fast forward. But for those of you who haven't, um, I'll explain. So as you can see, it's sticking to the surface. I'm going to zoom you in a bit more, actually, so you can have a closer look. There we are. It's sticking to the surface of the mould and you're almost burnishing it on as you rub it. Yeah, I can see I'm getting some onto that tissue inside there. You don't need much to cover the surface. Now, if you're doing lots of different colours, just remember that the one that the colour that you put on first that's touching the silicon, when you turn this up the right way, that is going to be the colour you see. This one's going to be very simple because I'm just doing it all in this lovely pinky, lavendery. I don't quite know what colour it is, really. Pinky lavender. Let's go with that. Now, if you get too much on the mould, don't worry. You can either tip it upside down and shake it out, any of the loose stuff, or you can just leave it because what will happen is it will float up to the surface on the back of your mould. Now, what people typically do is fill their mould up with black. And the reason for that is black resin. The reason for that is that the black resin makes the colours really pop and stand out. However, because I want the back of this snail to be clear, and I don't want to try and do it in two different colours. See, I'm trying to get into his little antenna and everything here. Um, yeah, because I don't want to try and do it in different colours and two different colour resin and all that sort of thing. I'm keeping this one very simple. Um, we're going just for clear resin. So while I'm at it, I shall paint a bit of this powder into um, a little mould. Yeah, one of my little random hearts or something. And we'll see, we'll have a look and see just what the difference is. If you put black behind it or if you put, if you put um, clear behind it. Or white, you get a different effect again if you, if you put white. Depends how see-through the, the powder is, really. Just trying to get right down into those antenna. Okay, while I'm doing this then, you know, you may fast forward, but would you like to know what snail's antenna are for? They have two lots. This mould's only got one, but land snails typically have two lots of antenna. The big ones that you tend to notice more are actually eye stalks. They have got equal tiny eyes on the end of those, so they use them for looking at things like we do with our eyes. I don't know how good their eyesight is, but that's what they're for. The other little set of antenna that are slightly below them, 
little bit more onto their nose. Um, those are for feeling and smelling. So there you go, now you know what they're for. And they are actually um, referred to as tentacles very often as well. I call them horns, they're snail horns. That's not the right name for them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I call them because they look like little horns to me. There we go. I think I've got the powder in everywhere. So it's very simple. We're just going for this girly pinky colour. Does it look pink to you? Does it look lilac? It depends how the light catches it. But you can see how metallic that is. I'm now going to remove the tissue from the inside. I can do it without the powder going everywhere. Of course, because it's a wipe, it's a damp, it's damp, so the powder's stuck to it. I can see I've just got the tiniest little bit there, which I can wipe out. I just wanted to see if I could actually be quite accurate about where the colours go. Um, because this snail mould, for anyone who hasn't used it, you will find that the shell isn't level. I don't know if you can see that, but it's higher when it comes down the side of the snail, it's higher the mould is. Therefore, if you fill it up part way to here to try to just fill the shell with one colour and the body with another, um, you get a line across the bottom of the shell, which you could fix by tipping it up. I might have a go at that at some point and putting in a second layer of the resin that you're using for the main shell. But, you know, I didn't really want to do that which is why I'm going for clear all the way through. And what I've done now in wiping that off is lost some of my powder from around here. So I'm just going to put the tiniest little bit of powder back around that lip. If I can do if I tip it up then it won't fall into the into the body, will it? There we are. But what we should have then is a nice clean shell that will just be clear and have all that sparkly stuff in it. Oh, bugger. Right, you see what I've done there? Did I swear? Yeah. of a clean up later. So for the main body I'm just going to stuff a load of this in and then I'll stuff that that I've cut down a bit in last. This is probably going to trap bubbles, I don't care. I think that'll add to the effect. You know me, I don't really care about bubbles enough. <laughs> I probably should. Right, just stuffing in lots. Now you can see what I mean about lots sticking out. So this is why the last bit so I'll keep stuffing it in. Let's put the tub out of the way. I'll keep stuffing it in. It'll keep jumping back out. So this is where the stuff that I've cut down comes in. Because the last layer will be the stuff that I've cut. Just so it doesn't keep jumping out. Having said that, it doesn't matter too much because you can trim it afterwards, can't you? some of the cut stuff. Oh, it's not making any difference, is it? Okay, skip that step. Anybody who wants to try this, don't bother cutting it. <laughs> well, you could. You could just cut it a lot finer, but I kind of wanted like a robbled up effect anyway. So Now, I don't know if this any of this is going to show through the um, 
the pinky colour. Um, I really don't know. But I'm going to fill it right up. I think I'm just going to go straight in now and uh, get the resin in there and clear all this up somehow. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, I'm just going to fill him up with resin and get the heat mat going as well, I think. That'll... Heating it up initially, it does speed up the curing, I know, but also it does initially um, make the resin go even waterier, more liquidy, less viscous, I think that's the proper term, isn't it? And that will help to settle bubbles out of it too, a bit. Because like I said, I don't, I don't really don't care if I have a few bubbles. But the same token, this could trap an awful lot of bubbles, couldn't it? The other thing I'm going to put in it before I pour the resin into the mould is a little dot of sparkle. If I can find my sparkle. Where's my sparkle? Here it is. I just want a nice lot of sparkle in here, that's all. I'm giving it a good shake. This is the um, rainbow alcohol ink um it's pretty awesome as you can see <laughs> that's only a tiny amount even because that's quite a big big area of resin isn't it and it's just to add a little bit of extra sparkle into it that's all just an alternative to putting a bit of really fine glitter in there we are so now i'm basically just going to pour it in and then try to tidy up all this mess i've made with all this cellophane so I think you can probably see now how more much more runny it is now obviously I'm not going to be able to use my heat gun on this I don't know to be honest I do keep racking rolled yeah molds using heat guns anyway but um, if I do put a heat gun on this I'll probably end up melting the cellophane right so I don't know how much this is going to use but it's certainly more than 150 millilitres of the resin so what i'm going to do then i'll do it off camera is i'm going to mix up another 150 millilitres and just fill it up and then i'm just going to leave it to kill and that's that so basically i'll see you for the demold right bit of an update this has cured mostly um it's probably not far off being demoldable but as you can see i haven't filled it quite up to the top um and as Resin does continue to give off fumes once it's cured for a day or two. I'm now keeping my gloves on when I handle it too. So what I plan to do, I'm just trimming off the bits of the excess. But what I plan to do is pop it in um, some more of the powder, giving my base at least this area bit hard to get, not be able to get under there too well but we'll give it a go and it's just to give it some well just the extra shine really but also to show you that it will this powder will stick to resin as well as you can see that's going on quite nicely there's a bit more I can trim off then what I'm going to do is just throw in a last oh it's only a few millimeters worth of resin just to top this up um, just to put like a finish over it really and then we will <laughs> this stuff sticks to me yeah and then I'll demold it in a few more hours but as you can see that's going on there rather nicely and I'm hoping it will show through through the shell a little bit I don't know I just thought it would finish it off nicely we'll see whether it really does or not in the end just got under there as best I can and that's it really that was all I wanted to show you so I'll just go and mix up that resin uh, and uh, chuck it in and then I really will see you for the demold <laughs> see you later snail demold time here we go I don't think this is going to be too difficult to demold it's the first time I've used this mold so fingers crossed little bits I'm gonna to have to trim off here and there I can see but what I'm gonna do is just loosen everything off don't want to break his tentacles that's the big issue 
So I'm going to put some, this is soapy water I've got in this needle tip bottle. It is a needle tip bottle, so it's quite sharp. I'm going to be very careful not to get it against the mould. See, I'm putting it onto the, onto the resin so I don't scratch the mould or perforate it. There, that should loosen it a little bit to keep going around. Now, some interesting facts I found out about snails. Thought I'd share these with you. Um, so, yeah, you'll probably know a lot of these. Snails are hermaphrodite. That means they're not necessarily boys or girls, they're both. And despite that, you know, like, uh, like most species, they do prefer to breed rather than to self-fertilise, which they can. Okay, that's weird, isn't it? But yes, they can. So what they do is they follow other snail trails around and they go looking for a suitable partner, which of course anybody they bump into could be a suitable partner because they're all hermaphrodite. And they circle around each other and they will bump each other with their little tentacles to communicate and to share chemicals and things. So basically that's their little courtship thing going on. Once they've done that, they will exchange sperm packets. Sorry, this is a bit adult for this time of day, isn't it? But they will exchange sperm packets and then they will separate off. I'm having real trouble getting this out. They'll separate off, go their own separate ways and they will go lay their eggs under a rock or some in some vegetation dead leaves anything like that oh I say <laughs> dead leaves or anything like that and then they will fertilize them with the little sperm packet now they could take anything from weeks to months depending on the species and depending on the environment to actually then hatch and at first they're funny little transparent things oh, I'm being so careful with these tentacles yeah, they're funny little transparent things. Oh, there we go, at first. Let's try them. Oh, yes, look, some of the uh, foil got down into here. But, way. <laughs> oh, I like it. Yeah, they're funny little transparent things at first, and then they go off and, you know, as they eat and they grow, they firm up and you start to get your big spiral. And then you have a snail. So what I did here was where the bottom... Um, wasn't quite filled up. I filled it up with some. Um, I put some of the pink, the, the purple, into the actual resin. You can see this little bit I need to sand off and a few little edges to trim. I'll run around that with the scissors or a little knife later. Let's get him dried up. So there's a little bit of the, yeah, a little bit of the, the cellophane showing through the pink. That's fine. <laughs> quite a lot showing through the pink there. Look. But isn't he lovely? And what has happened is we've ended up with, on the whole, the powder is following the shape of the shell, which is kind of what I wanted. Actually, that foil is showing through all the way down. Look, there's bits of it. Can you see? Bits showing through all the way down. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't want to have to worry about the fact that, you know, if I did it in two layers of resin, I'd end up with a colour across here and that sort of thing. So I think that worked and it's just that shredded stuff that you get to, you know, pack gifts in and things like that. I have ended up with a few bubbles there, but to be honest, it's so shiny and sparkly. You're not going to notice those. And most importantly, we didn't break his tentacles. <laughs> so there we go. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give me, give me a thumbs up. The thumbs ups let me know. Um, that you've enjoyed the video or got something out of it and that gives me a signal to obviously make more um, of a similar nature uh, it gives me some steer on what sort of things you're liking also you know feel free to put some comments in i do requests as you know so if there's anything you'd like me to try i'll you know i'm going to give it a go <laughs> uh, and also you know it's good to have your thoughts on the projects that i'm doing and uh, yeah be they good bad or indifferent Thank you very much to those who've subscribed. As I make this video, uh, I'm well over 800 subscribers and I never dreamt that that would happen so early on in my YouTubing. So thank you so much to all of you. If anybody else wants to subscribe, then please do, because that will then give me the a nice simple route to let you know when I've got something new coming out and uh, also to you know involve you if there's any, any subscribers only things too. 
thanks again everyone and i will see you for the next video